ghosts, the Bermuda Triangle, the root of evil, and all of the other great mysteries of the world have propelled this author's journey of putting together the logic to explain the unexplainable. The journey has spanned over 20 years, leading to a collection of eight books and with many tales to share during my interview with paranormal investigator and best-selling author, Eddie Osborne. Now, your last book was a big topic of controversy. Questioning the idea of religion as a source for certain events? To quote your book, to theory religious beliefs as a motive for the disturbed events of the world is elementary in thinking. Now, how do you respond to your critics? One who even called you the Antichrist. <laughs> you know, Leslie, I mean, I'm simply an author. I mean, trying to place my own theory and explain the world that we live in and the space between us all. I mean, if you take the religious element out of it on why we call someone evil, when they go shoot up a school of children, I mean, that's all I'm trying to explain. I mean, what creates that within someone? It's the metaphysical attributes that create that psychological behavior. Do you feel that you've gotten closer to an explanation? Energy. I mean, we're surrounded by it. We're made from it. And life flows on within you and without you. I mean, the one thing that I do believe in when it comes to religion, there's a light and there's a dark. And if you apply those same principles towards energy, whether it be a positive or a negative, I mean, you can start to build a case on understanding the mysterious. But how does negative energy create the madness in humans? Is it contagious? I can't catch it, can I? <laughs> I mean, think of the mystery of the Bermuda Triangle. Plane flies into it, disappears. I mean, a pocket of dark matter within our atmosphere creates this black hole. I mean, if you apply that same logic to the energy within us, this dark matter, negative energy, with the right variables, it can consume you. Scare me. It's a dead zone. Hey, excuse me? Your cell phone. It won't work here. Oh, yeah. I was trying to get a hold of you. Uh, you must be Eddie. I'm Will, your videographer. Pleased to meet you, Will. Come on in. We've got a lot of work to do today. Mystique. Oh, hot in here, too. How long has it been vacant? Very, very long time. Because of the ghosts, right? Ghost? Tell me, Will. What exactly are your job expectations here today? Uh, well, your Craigslist posting said you needed a videographer? to document this place uh, for a book you're writing on paranormal places. Ghosts, right? 
Sorry to sadly inform you. There's no such thing as ghost. Exactly are we documenting today? The hotel. But what's in the hotel? For a hotel, it's lit oddly. They weren't always this way. They became this color over time. This hotel has become its own life form. It lives and breathes this way. What is this room? Famous artist. He's infatuated with this hotel. He even felt the living spirit in it. You know, he once did an interview and he stated that every time he stayed in this hotel, he had the most vivid dreams and nightmares. But it's not haunted by ghosts or demons. This hotel, it's damned. Damned by what? By an evil negative force that I've been trying to document and understand for much too long. An evil force, like from hell? Hell? It's the devil? It's all folktale. Like Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny. If there truly was a heaven and hell, then evil things wouldn't happen to good people. Did something happen to you? You know, I'd once interviewed a man in jail accused of murdering his wife. They were the picture-perfect newlywed couple. They worked decent jobs, went to church on Sundays. The last remaining piece to their dream life together was the perfect home to raise their kids. But the house they moved into turned their dream into a nightmare. Oh, oh baby, wait, wait, wait a second. What? I'm gonna film you walking in. <laughs> I look terrible right now. You look great. The house looks better, you know, but whatever. What do you want me to do? Uh, just walk in the house and put the box down. And here we go into our dream home. <laughs> Drum I 
it's really hot in here. Oh, good. The painter's came. Oh, good. Uh, it says it's set at 68. Well, that's all right. It's freaking hot in here. Yeah. I don't know. I'll check it out later. Kids run around acting crazy. A dog chasing its own tail in the back left corner. There's you over there in a vegetable garden. <laughs> and there's me clearly on the grill. Just like we always imagined. and I think the heat is getting to me. Yeah. <laughs> Any luck with the AC? Uh, no. We're gonna have to call an AC guy. Mm, how much is that gonna cost? Uh, I won't know until I price them. Were you in the bathroom while I was taking a shower? No. You didn't draw something on the mirror? No, what are you talking about? Come here. It was right there, smiling back at me. Yeah, but the, there's nothing there. It's not funny. It was creepy. 
Well, yeah, it probably would be creepy if something were actually there, but it's not. It was there. Okay, look, we're both really tired. We need some rest. We need some sleep, okay? Lana? Lana, wake up! Lana! Lana, baby, wake up! Has this ever happened to you before? No. Never. It felt real. I was in our room. It felt like I was being choked by this shadowy figure. Maybe it was you. What do you want me to say? I apologize for nearly killing you in your dream. It's not funny. I'm just trying to make you laugh. Look, it's been a long two weeks. Moving with the heat, and we're both really tired. I promise it'll get better. And when it does, these nightmares... No, go away. Just try not to be such an asshole to me in my dreams. Uh, many more than I am already. I promise. Do you have to go? You know I travel for work. The job pays really well. That's the reason we can afford this dream house of ours. It's not a dream house if you're not in it with me. I'm only gonna be gone for two days. You won't even notice I'm gone. When I get back, I promise I'll carve out some time to make this a dream house for both of us, okay? You want me to build you something when I get back? Like a garden pit? Maybe fire pit? Perhaps sex swing? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all clear too. So what's the deal? AC is working properly. No leaks, no frozen mm -hmm. coils, no cracks in the windows or the walls, mm -hmm. and the vents aren't clogged with any dead rodents. Huh. So if everything's working properly, then why is it so hot in here? I mean, it's like 40 degrees outside. 
That's a good question. One I can't answer. I did all my checks and couldn't find anything wrong. Okay. Uh, thank you. Inspection's on the house. I wish there was more I could do to help. Thanks. Sorry. Have a good day. You too. Hey, babe. Hey, are you in a meeting? No, just grab some lunch. What's up? Hey, I just want to let you know that the AC repair guy came by. Oh, what'd he say? Is it going to cost a lot? No, it's not going to cost anything because he couldn't find anything wrong. What do you mean he didn't find anything wrong? <laughs> he said he checked everything and he couldn't find a problem. Look, that guy's an idiot. I'll call another company and have him inspect it. It might cost a little bit more, though. I don't care. It just... As long as it gets fixed. Yeah, well, tonight when I get back to the hotel, look for some other places. I gotta run to my next meeting. Talk to you soon. Okay. Love you. Hey, babe. Michael? Michael, can you come home tonight? What? What's wrong? The thing, the thing I keep seeing. I just saw it in the room and then I... Wait, hold on, hold on. What did you see? The thing, the thing. <laughs> I saw it first in the picture frame and then... And then in my dream, remember? And then, and then I was in our room and I looked at the TV and it was me. It was me on the TV. So I ran out of the room. I don't have any security cameras installed. Can you come home? Can you get a flight? Yeah, I just want you home. Look, I will be there as soon as I can. I'll try to hop an early flight if my meeting ends early, okay?
trust that everything will be okay. Sweetie, how was your trip? Who are you talking to? Nobody, silly. I heard you talking to someone. There's nobody in here but you and me. Welcome home. Are you seriously gonna say that you weren't talking to anyone there? Because I heard you. You're tired from your travels. You need sleep. Why don't you take a nap and I'll go get dinner? I'll be back soon. What's going on here? What do you mean? You called me last night all freaked out and I get home today to hear you talking to someone in the bedroom. And then you deny it? You have nothing to worry about anymore. Get some sleep. I'll be back soon. Lana? Michael! Michael! Hey, Deb. Come on in. 
Wow, it sure is humid in here. Is there anything that you may have failed to mention to us about the house? Anything at all that could be the explanation for what's going on here? You have a beautiful home. There's nothing wrong with this house. Well, despite the AC unit being out, but that's a minor fix, I'm sure. You'd be surprised. It's a beautiful home, but we both had our odd feelings about it. I mean, between the heat and her nightmares, it just... Do you want my honest opinion? Yes, please. You are a charming couple. Newlyweds, right? Yes. Well, sometimes I find it hard for couples, especially newlyweds, to get adjusted to being in a new home. This house is big. I think you two need to fill it up with a family. And when you do, you'll see how loving this house can be. <laughs> No, I don't think we want to put a family into a house we both have an odd feeling about. No, I agree. I... What about the previous owners? What about them? Yeah, why did they foreclose? Were they having the same problems that we were having? This house went into foreclosure because the previous owners disappeared and stopped making payments. It happens from time to time that an owner will run away from their responsibilities. It wasn't because of this house. Do you have the information of the previous owners? So that we could contact them, try to talk to them? I'm sorry, I don't. However, I can recommend a good therapist to you both. Sometimes I think it does a really good job of getting things out when you can talk to somebody other than yourselves. Well, <laughs> I'm on my third marriage myself, and if I knew now what I know after talking to my therapist, well, who knows? I might only be on my second. Debbie, thank you for coming by. I know we sound like crazy people, but we just needed some clarification on some things. Well, I'm sure this house will be everything you imagined it to be in time. Just give it some love and it will love you back. I promise. Lana, we have to get out of this damn house. Look, we can stay in a hotel, anything. This is our home. None of that matters anymore. We have to get out of here before something else happens. We have to go now. Lana. Lana. Lana, we need to get out of here. I need your help packing. Can you help me pack?
Will you help me pack? Okay, come on. something. was never found. Michael went to trial as a guilty suspect of her disappearance. He swore to a jury that he loved her and would never harm her. But that didn't matter. But I believed him. Why? Family before him had disappeared. And I personally believe the energy within that house took possession of them all. Like, their soul? Where's their body? Down to the smallest level. We're all energy. Have you ever heard of spontaneous human combustion? I may have heard it in the lyric. We could ignite into a ball of flames. Just like that, consumed in the thin air. It's been around us since the dawn of time. It's the energy that creates the fire that leads to warmth the burning hatred that leads to war. It consumes us. It creates the hatred within us. It's the reason why we believe hell is hot. Let's move on, shall we? A lot more to document, a little time to do it. Hey, Will, why don't you set your camera up right there, get some footage down the hallway. Right here. Yeah, that's good. I'm going to the room down the hall setting it in. What happened in here? Someone must have conducted an exorcism in here. Seriously? Does negative energy cause people to be possessed? 
It's a force. It could breed envy, greed, jealousy, or even hate. Or what we might describe as evil. We all have negative energy within us. Sometimes, with the right event, we can transfer that dark energy into anything we will it to. There was a story back in my hometown of a tormented boy named Lester who did just that. for you? Hey, listen to me. Carson's not scary enough, so go home, sissy boy. So go home. Cognitive action or decision is determined by an unbroken chain of prior occurrences. spent the next 17 years in his father's garage, making the perfect Halloween mask, putting all his hate into it.
daddy. Bye, kiddo. No candy. Fucking kids. Go away. I said we did. Hey babe, did you and Pumpkin come by a little while ago? No. Why? Nothing. Um, thought I heard something. You guys have a good time. Be safe, all right?
hell are you supposed to be? Do you know I could shoot and kill you for being on my property? Huh? Is that you under there, sissy boy? <laughs> it is! It is you, sissy boy Lester. What are you doing here? You want retribution for me picking on you when we were kids? You want to take a shot? You want to take a shot? I'm right here. Right here. Go for it. I think so. You're still the little sissy boy you were when we were kids. You need to get your ass out of here before I put a bullet in it. Evil force is much like a cancerous disease. Taking over a person's mind, body, and even soul. It's an appetite for darkness. It even strengthens it. These stories, they didn't happen. They're just stories, right? This homeless man was attacked by a crazed individual, eating his entire face off down to the bone. Yeah, I remember hearing something about that story. These events are real. I assure you. Look, I really appreciate the opportunity to come out here and help you on this project, but truth is, I'm a little freaked out right now. I kind of want to get the hell out of here as soon as possible. Will, you can't leave. We have one more room to inspect. Man, it's, it's just, you, you tell me all the hell and the stories and it's kind of hot in here. Will, one more room, then we both can go. What do you say? 20 more minutes. 20? I promise. I don't know. And I'll even promise to cut you in on a small share of the profits once it becomes a bestseller. What do you say? One last room. Good. Then it'll give me an opportunity to share one last story. It's a personal favorite of mine. So we're recording now. Yeah, did you push the button to the right? Yeah, but I don't uh, see anything. Did you take the lens cap off? <laughs> ah, that's a no. <laughs> uh, you see, this is why girls can't be camera operators. Shut up, Jared. I could be a good camera op if I tried to. Yeah, and maybe if I tried to give birth, I could do that. <laughs> and this is douchebag camera op Jared. I'm the assistant director, Molly. And our ever talented and oh so handsome director, Tommy. So Tommy, tell us what we're going to be shooting today. First, first tell me what you're doing. Just getting some behind the scenes footage. Just play along. Alright, alright. Okay. <clears throat> we are recording a documentary pilot show tracking the Bigfoot. And then? Sell, sell, sell. Big TV. And then we're moving out to Beverly Hills. Be some rich snobs. <laughs> Come on, man. Be honest with her. It's actually a sex tape with Bigfoot titled Furry Wood. <laughs> Hope you brought the lube, Molly. I heard he's huge. <laughs> okay, that's not very ladylike.
All right, get that bag of batteries right there, but there's a camera in there. Take that out. Remind me again. Why just the one? Because I don't have four hands to shoot with two cameras. I wonder if there's like some kind of mutated beast out here. What, like Bigfoot? No, that's absurd, but maybe like some redneck hillbilly like had sex with a deer and made like deer man. Deer man? It could happen. Yeah, I'm sure you'd try it. You wouldn't? You ready, bud? Yeah, let me just uh, focus real quick on Molly's huge boars. <clears throat> Are you ready? Yes. All right, so I'm here with uh, Stacy, and she was telling me how she was running through this uh, this trail here the other day, and uh, you know I, I know it was hard, I know it was tough, but uh, please, will you take us through it again? Well. Uh... As you said, I was running through this trail um, right here where we, where we are. And um, I paused for a second just to test my heart rate. And I I suddenly just heard this strange noise over here to, to my left. Like, um, it was sort of like heavy feet brushing away leaves. Okay. And... Um, and it, it it's okay it just it came right at me um it came at me it was large and tall and it came it came right at me and it made love to me with its large cock <laughs> please cut All right, okay. Don't pant her until uh, her head's down. All right, action. I didn't know what to do. It came right at me like this wild beast ready to attack. I just, I just froze. I... Can we cut the camera off, please? How do you like that improvisation? Bravo, that was awesome. Thank you. You're the best. Yo, Tommy. What's up? Man, I don't think this is a good place to put the tracks. What, where's that? Well, shouldn't Bigfoot be like in the forest, not on the edge of it? Why are you recording this anyway? It's behind the scenes footage. Uh. Baking Bigfoot trucks. Probably not the best behind the scenes footage. Well then call that blackmail footage if I don't get paid well once we get the big network deal. Alright, fair enough. Here we are. We're hot on the trail here. I know he's around here somewhere. Some kind of evidence. There have been numerous sightings in this area. And I'm Oh look at this. Oh, can we get a close-up of this? Oh, yeah. That's got to be. I mean, these are not human. This has got to be at least, at least, what do you think, 17, 18? At least, at least size 17. Definitely. Oh, shit. What y'all doing out here in these woods? Making trouble? No. Mr. Squid. Come again? Squid's my name. Well, no, Mr. Squid. We're, uh, we're filming a TV show about Bigfoot. Who said there's a Bigfoot around here? We got an eyewitness. Stacy over here. She saw him. Uh. Hmm. 
you ain't from here. There ain't no Bigfoot around here either. But I've got something a lot scarier that you want to see and you want to put in your little picture show. Oh yeah? Well, what's that? Come on. Come on, take a look. What do we do? Not following him. I... Y'all coming? He's creepy. He's creepy. But I think I think we should go see him. I mean, he might have gold for us. You know, this is what this is the opportunity we're looking coming. for. Y'all coming? Yeah. Just hold on a second. What do you think? I Let's do it. I don't know, man. What do you think? Come on. Please, come on. Nothing's gonna happen. It's just one guy. It's three of us. It's just right down here. <clears throat> Right down here. Come on in real close. Y'all see it? Uh, squid? Uh, there's nothing there but dirt. Kids come out here and you want to always see something strange. Well, that's perfectly fine with me. Because this son of a has got to eat. Tommy! No! Tommy! No! Oh. Damn thing ate almost my whole family until my nephews and I caught him. We couldn't kill him. We knifed him. We shot him. He wouldn't die. So what do you do? You make him your pet. And you feed him. And guess what's on the menu today? <laughs> Sweet Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, honey, don't be scared. You two stupids! Go get a shovel and a bucket. There's gonna be a bloody damn mess in here when this son of a gets to eating. Gone! Hungry? Huh? You hungry, you son of a-
but we have to put as much distance between us. Fucking move your ass. Okay, oh, hey, tell me you have the keys. Tell me you have them. Okay, tell me you have your cell phone. They took it. Okay, uh, there was a gas station about five miles out. I'm gonna go and get it help. You stay here. No, I'm not staying here alone. I'm coming with you. No, 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 no. You have to trust me. No. No, Jared, don't leave me. No, Jared, oh, please. You have to trust me. Jared! Follow evil long enough, it will eventually consume you. Then you become the damned. The legends you hear about, werewolves, vampires, they're all real stories. Half-sell is folk tales. We as beings, 
try to put fiction in the things we fear the most. We're all animals. Seeking the thrill of the hunt. Because we all have to eat. Will! Come away from me! You're fine! 